Let's bring in Terry McCran to unpack these anxieties from Australians. Hello, Terry. Thank you so much for coming on the program. Over the 12 Great months to March, man. inflation came down a little to 7%. It was at 7.8%. Now, a reduction's better than an increase, but I don't <laughs> think Australians are going to be giving the Treasurer any bouquets over this rate. What's your take on the state of inflation? Well, Amanda, very simply, things are very tough. I mean, what, we, what all those people were expressing was the reality of their lived experience, and it's pretty much the case for 26 million Australians. It's not something that's only impacting on some of us. Uh, and that, unfortunately, that brutal reality is not going to get any better anytime soon. And if we unpack it into the various components, I mean, we're not seeing a dramatic fall in the cost of things, i.e. food, rentals, petrol, those sorts of things, what we spend our money on day to day, week to week. We're certainly not seeing a reduction in the cost of rentals or the cost of buying a house. And obviously, we are seeing an increase in the cost of your interest when you, for those that either have a mortgage or in the process of getting a mortgage. And all of those things are not going to be mm. instantly cured. And I think when you, you know, listening to your discussion about the aged care for, uh, context as well, what we saw with the Albanese government is they basically promised that they had this magic wand that could solve everything. And it was captured in that $275 promise to cut power prices. You know, it's the sickest joke we've ever seen politically. I mean, since since the election of the Albanese government, I'm not saying it's their fault particularly, but it's the reality that power prices have jumped dramatically and they're going to jump dramatically again in, in over the next couple of months. And I think that sort of captures it. They promised the magic wand. There is no magic wand. There's only going to be more pain, mm. I think, pretty much uh, into the foreseeable future. Do you think that penny's dropping for Australians? Are they seeing now a link between what governments do and inflation and, again, the link to their daily struggle with the cost of living? Or are they buying Dr Chalmers's blame game, which is essentially <laughs> just look at the RBA, it's all their fault? Yeah, well, that, that also takes us into very dangerous territory, Amanda. Uh, we don't want to see the RBA undermined by the government, and particularly not at this point in time, because mm. we have a governor whose term expires in September. Uh, and it's in the gift of that same treasurer who will replace him. Uh, it's fundamentally important for the in, for the integrity of policy in Australia and our credibility globally that we and this applies to every country. A fundamental foundation is an independent reserve bank that is not dictated to and does things just to please the government of the day. I mean, this is why we have an independent government reserve bank. We don't want politicians taking the soft options on interest rates. It'd be very easy to say, let's take interest rates back to zero. That would solve, that would make everything nice and rosy for mm. homeowners, or, but not for home buyers, obviously, not for people in the rental space. But it would cause immense damage to the economy. And, you know, we, we, what sort of person is going to replace Governor Lowe in September? Is Jim Chalmers going to put in there somebody that will quote-unquote, do his bidding? Will he put in somebody that will have equal independence and credibility? So, you know, times are tough out there, Amanda, but it's like it could get far worse if we started messing around with the independence of the Reserve Bank. Yeah, and with the hard time Philip Lowe has had in recent months, it's hard to imagine that there'd be too many of Australia's best and brightest queuing up to be his replacement. Um, Terry McCran, thank you very much for your time this evening.